Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today we're going to talk about flexible materials. More specifically, we're going to talk about TPU. Now while I'll be using the Spanner Hands TPU, which by the way is my awesome sponsor for this channel, make sure you check them out, links in the video description. I have also found that TPU works pretty much in the same way for all makes that I have tried so far, whether it's Spanner Hands, whether it's Rigid Ink, uh, whether it's Matter Hackers, they all kind of have the same properties. So this tutorial should work the same way. Before that, I get to ask, what do you think? My new swag. I finally received my shirt. It took a few days to get here, but it's finally here. I finally have swag, official swag. If you want in on this, also links in the video description. So what we have here are many samples of the same file printed over and over again in kind of different manners. So I get a lot of people asking me how to print TPU. I know a lot of people have difficulty printing TPU. I know a lot of people have difficulty printing TPU on the Mark III or whether it's Bowden, even if it's direct. So today I'm, I really want to share with you guys how I print in TPU. The first thing that you need to know is that TPU surprisingly is actually hygroscopic. Yes, hygroscopic, not hydroscopic. You learn something new every day. I always thought, you know, hydro, hydra, water, hydroscopic. No, it's hygroscopic. Basically, TPU actually absorbs moisture and surprisingly, it actually absorbs quite a lot uh, relatively quickly. So we're gonna start off with these two samples here. I'm gonna put them down. Both of these are the exact same G-code printed on the exact same printer, which is the Creality Ender 3, um, in the same day. The difference is the one on the left is from the spool that I have left out for about three or four days, so it was absorbing moisture. The one on the right was actually sealed in a little plastic bag with desiccant in it for about a week. This is the main result difference. So the first thing you really, really need to um, take care of is storing your TPU correctly. So what I did once I printed these two, I decided I want to kind of do a bit of a benchmark. I want to see which is the quickest and easiest way for me to actually be able to print well like this without having to wait a few days um, and have the filament dry up on its own with desiccant and a, uh, an airtight bag. So in come these four pieces here. Now, once again, same exact G-code as the other two pieces. The only difference is that these have been cooked. So what I did was I cut up four pieces of filament in five meter lengths each. And I decided to cook those sample filaments in the oven for a certain amount of time at a certain amount of degrees. The first sample was put in the oven for half an hour at 50 degrees Celsius. And as you can see, the print quality was already a lot better. Now keep in mind, this is the same exact filament half an hour after I had printed with it this pretty much abysmal uh, model here, uh, which was, well, basically doused in um, humidity. So after half an hour at 50 degrees, uh, it already looked a lot better. So what I did after that, I took the second piece sample that I had and I cooked it for half an hour at 70 degrees and that improved the quality even further. Um, it's pretty much pristine. It actually looks even better than the sample that I did that was sort of, you know, drying on its own in the sample bag. So then just to expand further on that, I also did two more pieces. The other two samples that I cut, um, I cooked one for one hour at 50 degrees and the other one for one hour at 70 degrees. And to be completely honest, um, there wasn't much difference there um, from the one that was in the oven for 30 minutes at 70 degrees. So I came to the conclusion that if you throw it in the oven for possibly 60 or 70 degrees um, for about an hour, if you have a full spool of filament, leave it there for an hour, 70 degrees, 
it should give you a lot better print quality. This then led to another bit of a benchmark experiment I wanted to do, and that was printing on the Mark III. Now I know a lot of people have difficulty on the Mark III because um, filament tends to come out between the bowdern and the uh, the gears, the, the Bonte gears. Now the thing is this, I've printed a lot of TPU. I've printed with bowden style extruders, um, I've printed with uh, direct extruders, and I've come to the conclusion that you can pretty much print TPU with any printer if you print with the right settings. So the first two samples are, um, this is standard TPU, the one that I had sitting on the spool outside. As you can see, the print quality once again, pretty much abysmal, lots of stringing, lots and lots of stringing. And I took another sample, left it in the oven uh, for half an hour at 70 degrees, and the result is night and day, and even the stringing actually reduced to almost non-existent, just very, very tiny wisps. Now, the reason why these on the Ender 3 look a bit better than the ones on the Mark III is because I sliced those with Simplified 3D, and Simplified 3D has the option for you not to travel through open spaces when printing. So it kind of makes it much cleaner because when it needs to move on the model from one point to another, it just moves through the model itself without going through open spaces and leaving wisps behind. Now, another thing that you can do on the Mark III in order to remove those wisps is make sure you disable Z-Hop. For those who don't know, Z-Hop is the setting in the Mark III which gets the nozzle to lift up uh, about less than a millimeter, about 0.8 millimeters. So when it does travel moves from one place to another, um, it just lifts up, moves, and starts printing again. Now what happens with TPU is that seeing as it's very stringy um, and there's quite a lot of pressure within the hot end, when it does the Z-hop, it actually pulls a little bit of filament out and creates those wisps. So what I did, once again, same exact G-code, all I did was remove the Z-hop. I uh, sliced the files, same exact setting except the Z-hop, and I reprinted once again with the normal filament that was left outside, um, well, unattended in the humidity, and the other one that was cooked uh, for half an hour at 70 degrees. As you can see, um, even without Z-hop, if you leave it outside, not taking care of the filament, you still get those stringing, wisps, whatever, the filament looks absolutely hideous. And if you look at the one that was cooked, it looks almost pristine. So there you have it. The first thing you always need to do if you want to print in TPU is make sure that your filament is dry and taken care of. If you feel that it's not printing well and you know that it's not printing well because while you're printing, you kind of hear this sizzling uh, noise going on. I try to record it. Sounds something like this. That sizzling sound that you're hearing is literally the, the water moisture in the filament just cooking itself off. If it's if it's printing properly, if it doesn't need any more drying, it won't just just won't make any sound. So there, tip number one make sure your TPU is dry before you start printing. Next is what settings to use. The, the question I use, get the most is what settings do I use? And along the years I've learned that TPU is, it's a patient print. You have to be very patient to print with TPU. I've learned that the slower you print, the better. With direct extruders, especially something like the Flexion extruder, you can get away with printing a little bit faster, maybe 30, 40 millimeters a second maximum. That's to me, at least, these are my preferences here. Uh, these are what work for me. They won't necessarily work for you, but I'm just sharing what I have learned. With Bowden extruders, um, if the extruder and the entry of the filament is actually relatively tight, there is no gaps, you, I tend to print no faster than 20 or 25 millimeters a second. If the uh, extruder has quite a large gap for the filament to tangle in, I tend not to print more than 15 millimeters a second. Now here's the trick. It's not just 
printing at that speed, I change all the speed settings to 15 millimeters a second or 20 millimeters a second just to keep everything constant. The printing speed is 15 millimeters a second. The outside perimeter is the same speed. Infill is the same speed. Second layer, top layers, um, whether it's supports if you're using supports, uh, any even retraction speed, I tend to use the same speed that I would use when printing. It kind of creates, at least in my mind, it kind of creates this constant flow of how you print with TPU and it equalizes the pressure within the Bowden tube and it, it doesn't do drastic changes in speed and pressure within the nozzle or the Bowden tube itself. Now, as you can see, I've I tend to print quite a lot with TPU and I have more projects coming in with TPU. I have, I, I also have Bioflex coming in. That will be very interesting because it will be new to me. But I wanted to do this episode because I get a lot of questions about it and I wanted to share what I have learned. Once again, the, this is how I use TPU. It might not work for everyone, um, but if you start slowly, work your way up from there, you should be good to go. As for what this little design is, I'm doing a lot of home improvements at the moment and I'm going around the place and I'm seeing things that I need, what I don't need. And this is something, it's a little, little device, let's call it, that I've designed in Fusion 360. I'll be doing an episode on this, but to show you exactly what this is for, this is meant to solve a simple problem, which can create quite a headache. As you can see, I have some styrofoam around the handle of my door here. The reason why that is there is because every time I open this door, if there is a bit of wind, it's going to open, it's going to smack against the wall, and it's going to leave a mark. As you can see, it's already started leaving a mark over there. Every time I open the door, if I'm not careful, it hits the wall and leaves a dent. What this will do is simply slide in there. When the door is about to close, just bounces off. Even if you put some force into it, it still won't reach the wall. And there you have it. Now, there is one final tip, which is very, very important. And that is TPU sticks way too much to PEI sheets. So if you try to print this on the Mark II or the Mark III with PEI, and you've cleaned it with uh, isopropyl alcohol, chances are this is going to stick really well and you're going to ruin the, uh, the PEI sheet in order to remove it. It's happened to me in the past. It, I, it happened to a few people. If you're careful. You don't have to ruin your PEI sheet. However, there's a very simple solution. Some might suggest to use window cleaner on the PEI sheet to make it less sticky. I found that that didn't really make a lot of difference to me. In my case, what I do is use a bed adhesive. Now, in my case, I've, I've always loved Magigoo. Uh, nowadays, I am sponsored by Magigoo, so this in, is in no way, shape, or form directed to me trying to sell Magigoo, uh, but I do use it quite a lot, and I find that using Magigoo on the print bed creates very good adhesion, and when it's ready, it actually creates that barrier in between to make to, to have it easily lift off. Now you can use also Yuhu, it's just not as clean. Um, another option also is a printer pro stick, a printer stick, I think it's called. Um, also a very good solution. So yeah, Magigo and a printer stick are possibly the two that I would recommend to use. And those are my Two or three tips, I think, on how to print with TPU. It's not the easiest of filaments to use, um, but once you get the hang of it, it can become easy. Um, it just takes a long time to print. If you're not fussy, then again, if you're into 3D printing, speed is not something you're really concerned about. I think it's more quality that you want out of a 3D print. And if you take your time, um, make sure your filament is dry, reduce the speed, reduce all the settings that I mentioned, there's nothing to stop you from having that kind of print. So that is it from my end. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. I will see you again possibly tomorrow for Mail Day Wednesday. More packages have come in for the 3DMN mural, which is looking absolutely awesome. I want to thank my sponsor, Spanner Hands, for, uh, for his awesome contribution to the channel. I want to thank my awesome Patreons for their support. I want to thank Magigo as well. And I want to thank you guys for, well, constantly watching and interacting with my video. That is it. Thanks again. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys. <laughs>